College Football National Championship recap between Clemson and Alabama. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. I'm not going to list them because you can go find out more about them at tunicatravel.com. You can read everything about every one of them. They're all wonderful. We promise tunicatravel.com is the place to be. So go check that thing out. Clemson 44, Alabama 16. Alabama did not score for what almost, almost three full quarters. So so forty four and a half minutes somewhere around there. Yeah, well you can call it that and be safe. Um, good gracious, I just the the difference in this ball game was physicality, a hundred percent, and and on top of that, matchups. Right. Yeah, I was about to say I think it's more match. You played physical teams, okay. Uh, Georgia is a defensively a physical team. LSU is a defensively a physical team. Mississippi State, defensively a physical team. These are tough, hard teams. The diff- all of which slowed down Alabama's sl- offense, all the, and they all slowed them down. Yeah, but none of them did this. And I think, I think it was two parts. None of them are even close offensively to put the pressure that Clemson put on Alabama, and. Um, and it is matchups. I, we we talk about all the time. Matchups makes fights. That is that is very 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 true. When we get to the bowl breakdown, we'll talk about that. Yep. But um, I have never seen desperation from Nick Saban before. And I'll tell you, he this, hit the panic button. It, it felt like early it's and early. Off. It was it it looked bad on him. Well, like there's some guys that can handle. You know, they just look desperate, and that's just part of it. Yeah. But it 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 was a stink on him that he could not shake. It was it was panic. I, I think a lot of uh, the coaching turnover over the last three four years, I think rear, finally reared its head. Oh, I completely agree. Um, last night because Clemson has had what three coaches turnover in the last four years? When that, none of them at major position, like no. like none of their OCs or DCs are have gone anywhere in the no, last I mean, they, at least they, three years. They pay Brent Venables. Uh, what two and a half million, almost two and a half million now, and they've and, got. And he's not interested in, in no, being a head Todd, coach. Todd Elliott, Jeff Scott, co-offensive coordinators. Both of them have been there, I think, three years at least. Um, well, they, they've been there since Chad Morris left, and Morris left before oh, their right. first playoff appearance. So at least the past four years, yeah, maybe the past five. Um, yeah, so there's con- there's a level of continuity there that I think. Did you is, know who Clemson's offensive line coach is? No, Robbie Caldwell. Oh, I didn't know that at all. You you remember him from Vanderbilt? He was at Vanderbilt, yeah. Yeah, the turkey say. inseminator. Like I it, don't rem- You don't remember him talking about that? No. He was the most entertaining, and this was like 2011 Vanderbilt. Okay, then he wasn't like, the most entertaining coach in the SEC. He was he was close because he made media days one year. Oh, I mean, just two, made it. 2011. Les, no, I mean, Les he still was had there. Les Spurrier was still there. No, uh, sir. No, sir. Those two were Bielema was not there yet. No, but none of those – those are the two kings. Yes, of media yes. Day. But but Caldwell, like, he – I did not even realize that. And he's been at Clemson for a while now. Offensive line played pretty great. Uh, yes. There was, that was that was another like, – I heard, I heard one, one group of people said it was like a hermetic seal around oh, it was crazy. Trevor Lawrence. So here's, here's the problem that you run into, right? If Alabama could not get pressure with their – they're down three – or really, because they they're always going to bring four. They're always going to bring four. That's right. But if you can't get pressure with four, then you are in a whole lot of trouble. Because if you drop everybody, that's okay if you've got at least a matchup somewhere. But Clemson against Alabama secondary with those wide receivers one had on basically every matchup. Yes, and and you know Saban likes to leave those guys on an island, and he could not do it in this situation. Now it losing. Uh, Diggs, Trevon Diggs, early in the season, that was that didn't help. Losing his top six defensive backs from last season did not help. You know, four of those are playing like, well, obviously the NFL season regular season's done, but by the end of the season, four of those guys were playing like starter minutes. Like that's how good that secondary was last year. And then you lose six of those guys. You lose Trevon Diggs early. You lose. Uh, the name escapes me. Uh, somebody a middle of the season. You got basically eight guys that had experience gone. The only real experienced guy that you got back was uh, Thompson. 
we, we knew that defense was going to be inexperienced, especially in the yeah. secondary positions. And, um, and gosh. It, before the season started. And, and through this many games, you have been able to cover that up, right? There's oh, been yeah. spots where, okay, you might say, all right, like somebody could have been able to put up more points, right? If there's one conference, even though I believe it is still the biggest, best, baddest, strongest conference, is the SEC, um, it, we, we are probably dead last out of all the power conferences in offense. Probably. Probably. I, I mean, nobody um, is nobody scared of, of any of our offensive no. talents except for Alabama. I mean, Missouri can score, but they're a Big 12 team. I mean, they, they can't stop yeah. anybody. They're a sieve. And, but if you put up Missouri against Alabama's defense, Missouri put up 10 points. That's right. That's, you know, that's it's, what I'm it's saying. the same they're thing. A, they're like, a sieve when they play, you know, it, I guess they're defensively, they score forever. And, yeah, you're right. They hit somebody in the mouth and – it the so. the game came down to big plays, and Clemson made all of them, and Alabama made none of them, and it was shocking to me that Alabama could not get out of their own way, right? So they they were focused in certain spots all year, but they weren't focused for like an entire game all year. They made they had six penalties last night. They had. Uh, the other part of this, and I know I'm going all over the place because we I didn't write down anything. I just wanted to kind of speak from from what I saw. Okay. Losing Christian Miller, the Alabama linebacker, senior linebacker, in the Oklahoma game with the hamstring injury was massive because Miller was the one guy that you could count on to get pressure from the linebacker spot. He was the one guy that, that didn't always run himself out of plays. Mac Wilson, fantastic linebacker, but he has a tendency to overrun a play. He Anthony Jennings has a tendency to overrun a play. Well, that's what younger players do. And that's well, what both of those are, causes you. But but they're not even inexperienced. Like they've been around for a while now. Uh, but you didn't have Terrell Hall, uh, Terrell uh, Lewis. I'm sorry. Uh, you didn't have Terrell Lewis. You didn't have um, uh, Christian Miller. And and. Terrell was out for the whole season, so you can't blame it on that. that he didn't um, play at all. But, but he did play last year in the national championship game, and he was one of the biggest reasons why they won the game. So this year you didn't have those guys, and while, yeah, they restock, they restock, they restock every year, you're still coming in there with inexperienced guys that make mistakes that all season long have not had to play perfect games. And against Clemson, you had to play a perfect game. Now, Clemson showed up, and they've got inexperienced guys too. But that's where it came down. There were a few plays here and there that went Clemson's way that flipped the whole thing. All right, so you're beating up on the defense quite a bit. They gave up 44 points. But your offense didn't score for three quarters. They Okay, so offense. Uh, you got two touchdowns. One of them was the big two a bomb. Yeah. You have you had no sustainable drives early. You just scored on big plays. And then the rest of the game you had big long well, sustainable no, drives. No. They, they you had, had big long sustainable drives that ended in you going for it on fourth down and missing. You they, going for it they on had sustainable drives um early on. But here's the so well, you scored on the first two drives that were not well, sustainable. The first they drive, were just big plays. Uh no, the first drive was the Five interception plays. touchdown. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so, so Clemson goes on. up 7 nothing, And then you come back three plays, 75 yards, a minute touchdown. 15, touchdown. Clemson so comes a, down. That's not a drive, though. Four plays, 75 yards, a minute 30, touchdown Clemson, 14-7. to seven. And then Alabama, 10 plays, 75 yards, 4 minutes, 12 seconds, okay. touchdown, miss the extra point. Then you hold Clemson to a three and out. 11 plays, 45 yards, 6 minutes, and you kick a field goal. I thought when that three and out happened, this is where the game gets wonky. That's, well, I, so Alabama kicks the field goal, but even then, it should have been a touchdown. You've got, like, what is it, second and goal at the one, and you get a, a false start penalty? Like, and after that point, Alabama's offensive line could not block Clemson's down four. And once you had Clemson's down four getting pressure every single play, it was done. Yeah. There was nothing you could do. And then Clemson scores on every drive. I mean, it was just – I mean, after that, Clemson goes on to score on almost every drive. Oh, yeah. After that, so there's the punt. 
uh, yeah. that was three and out, and yeah. then Alabama kicks the field goal. Six plays, 65 yards, touchdown Clemson. Alabama, seven plays, 31 yards, and and you're driving. You're in Clemson territory, Correct. and you throw an interception. Picks. And then Clemson, eight plays, 47 yards, touchdown. So I'm, 28 I'm sure to we'll, 16. And, and I don't know how deep into the weeds you're going to go on the numbers. There are two stats. Well, the numbers that, surprise you because nah, – The numbers don't like, surprise me at all. Well, there's these two numbers surprise me. The two stats that stood out to me more than anything, one of them carries two big games. So Alabama played two – Big games where they either, everyone says, should have gotten beat, got dominated the entire game against Georgia, but ended yeah. up winning. In this game, where they got dominated the entire game, they were minus two in both of those games in the turnover turnover situation. And their last three games, the SEC title game, the game against Oklahoma, and this game, zero turnovers. Yeah. zero For a team that is... Big boy bully football, we take the ball away from you. We beat you up physically. They got no sacks in this game. They got no turnovers. I found that crazy. The other well, they, stat, They've had zero sacks and zero turnovers in the last... No, not th- surely all three games, right? It's not the... It, I think it was maybe the last two, two games. games. I don't uh, think they sacked... They Ky- did, oh, no, 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 they did sack Kyler. Okay, I was so, about to say, I was, no turnovers in the last no, three. No, no turnovers in the last and three And no games. sacks in this game because... And they and they lost the ball. They Tua had two interceptions in the in the SEC game, had two interceptions in this game. Um, the other number that stood out to me, they were three for six on fourth down. It's not the three they got that shocks me. It's not the three they didn't get that shocks me. It's that he had to go for it six they times. They went for it six times on fourth down. That's that's Nick Saban panicked. Yeah. Panicked. Well, I mean, because at that point, you're already down. When he started going well, for when it, he started on going down, for it, he was only down uh, 21 uh, 16. Uh, the very next drive, he went no, no, for no, it. No, no, that's no, because that was the interception. What? Right. But uh, I'm oh, talking no, no, about he went for it on fourth, fourth, down. Uh, fourth down at the Alabama 34. Yeah. The next drive, they went after that they went for it on every fourth down. Um because you you knew that you wouldn't be able to slow down Clemson. But you're only down 21-16. You didn't know that two drives before that, you got them to go three and out. I mean, yeah, you're right. But you see what I'm saying? At that point in the game, well, but it's that's, not that's panic the thing. time. He, he got the fourth down. Like they they got the fourth down but on it, that one. But it, but it doesn't it's so it, it's if you see a matchup that you like, because remember uh, he kept going Josh Jacobs in the Wildcat. You, you can't continue to do that all. You're talking about in, early in the second quarter. You started this. Well, he so in the first half he only went forward on fourth down one time, and it was that one that Josh Jacobs actually did pick up from the Wildcat. Um, however, that one ended up in an interception. Remember that was to a second interception. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. then Clemson comes back down, and it's twenty-eight to sixteen. Okay. And then Alabama punts after that, after a five-play, nine-yard drive, uh, which, by the way, stalled because of a uh, penalty. Uh, and then Clemson comes down and gets a field goal, which was helped by another Alabama penalty. Just a stupid decision by one of the guys in the secondary to hit somebody after he'd already run out of bounds. So You give them 15 yards. So let me ask you a question, okay? I'm not, I'm, I promise you I'm not trying to pile on or anything. I really want to know this. Do you think there's any way that these players felt like we've been in this game every year since this thing existed? Like the first year that, uh, that, that Ohio State ran through? Other than that, they've played in this championship game. Do you think they just thought we're going to win this thing easy? Like, this is just moonwalking to championships. So there is something to be said, because remember, we're talking 18 to 22-year-old kids. Yes, that's, that, that, that is the reason I bring this up, is we're not talking about professionals, and we're not talking about Nick Saban here. You can coach all you want. If an 18-year-old don't want to do something, he damn well ain't going to do it. Well, and it's, I don't think that they didn't want to win a championship. Oh, I, I right? completely agree. But I think that they maybe thought that it would be easier than it was. Yes. And the that's reason the, being... That's the question I'm asking. Because... Two years ago, Clemson beats Alabama on the last play of the game, right? So, uh, four years ago. Four years ago. Four years ago, uh, Alabama beats Clemson 45-40. to 40. And then three years ago, is this three? Or are, yeah. my, are my numbers right? Whenever. Whatever. Uh, Alabama beats Clemson 45-40. Well, then Clemson comes Deshaun back Watson and beats them on the last play of the game. Last play of the game. And then Alabama was fired up last year 
And revenge factor. Revenge get a little, factor. Get a little come up and they manhandled Clemson Correct. the entire game, beat them twenty four to six. But but even even the all right, so we're talking about the championship game now. Even against Georgia, they got down big and they made this big comeback. I feel like they were like, We can't lose these games. We're just we're just gonna win. Something's gonna happen. The ball's gonna go our way. A call's gonna go our way because it's happened. If you're a senior or you're a junior on this team, it's happened which in every not, game. Not a lot of these guys are seniors and juniors, but it's happened in every game. Yeah. And so when you're preparing, when you're going through your walkthroughs, when you're mentally trying to get ready and physically running through drills to prepare for this game, there's somewhere in some 22 year old's mind, some 21 year old's mind that. Man, we ain't, what are we doing out here, man? Like, why? Why am I why struggling? Are we doing, why yeah, am I you know, I'm ready. This? I'm ready to get to the party after this. Yeah, man. I, you know, I want to be in California and just hang out. Why are we doing all this? Yeah, you know, no, we're I, gonna I go think, out here and roll. I you think know, there's that's what absolutely we're do. a lot of that there. I think there's that because last I think year it showed. Last year it was revenge for Alabama, and even though they were the four seed and Clemson was the one seed, Clemson was number one. Uh, Alabama doesn't even deserve to be in this thing. Like, we're not worried about them. And Alabama, revenge for the last yes. year and everything else, right? So, But I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about the championship game, not just the games against Clemson. Oh, you're talking even, about the SEC even, championship no, game? No, even when they played at Georgia in the national championship game. Oh, last year. Like, like every, every time they've been in this game, they've controlled it. Even when they were down, at no point did they feel like they, they don't have this. Last night, I think the coaching it, staff always felt like we've got this. I think, I think last night, the coaching staff felt like, oh no, we like don't, we don't oh, have this. I, that's that's the exact look I felt like I saw all across the sidelines, and I'm not talking about like middle end of the third quarter when it was getting ugly. No, this was second quarter. I'm talking early second, second quarter. quarter. They were just like, we can't stop that. No. And which we, is, it's we entirely cannot why stop that. Alabama went so the the starting to go forward on fourth down. Started mostly in the second half. Yeah. Uh, and it started with the fake field goal on that first drive, which the first drive, 13 plays, 51 yards, 5 minutes and 13 seconds. And they got the ball all the way down to the Clemson 30, uh, sorry, 22. And you know why I, that fake field goal was worse than Kirby's fake punt? You know why that's worse? Because Kirby at least had a lead when he did it. No, Kirby was tied. It was 28 Was it tied? Yeah, because the, the next drive is when Jalen came down and scored the touchdown to go up 35 For some reason, points. I thought they had the lead still. No, no, no. no. It, was, it was a tie ball game. But anyway, they weren't um, losing. You're, you're, you're losing this game. You need points. You need to start accumulating points. And yeah. you run a fake You run a fake field goal against one of the biggest, most physical defenses in the country, if not the biggest and most physical defense in yeah. the country. With your 140 pound kicker as the lead blocker, yeah, and he missed the block. Like it, well, he didn't, he didn't get blown off the, the block. On, he just on, he missed, missed the block. Him. He doesn't block. He's a kicker. No, I'm with you. I mean, that would be like me grabbing a baseball bat, walking out to the Redbird Stadium and trying to hit a baseball. Like I'm, I just don't do that. I can't do that. No, I'm. Let with me you. put it on a tee. I can hit it. I, I, I'm, I'm. You get my, get I my totally, mom to lob it up there. I can hit it. I totally get you. I know what you're saying. You're talking about the best linebackers and the best defensive linemen in the country. Hey, go block one of those guys. And who, and then who? the the nail in the coffin was the next drive. Yes, that's it. Was three plays, seventy five or seventy six yards, a minute twenty one. Done. Uh, you had a let's see, Trevor Lawrence loss of two yards. Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Pass to Amari Rogers, four yards, and then the pass to Justin Ross for seventy-four yards. Gone, gone. And so, and that was Ju Justin even... Ross was. I know everybody is slurping Trevor Lawrence right now. Oh, that was should. actually uh, that was the play where Savion Smith fell down. Fell down. So, the, and, 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 but he didn't fall down. He actually uh, tore his Achilles on well, that play. He got carted off the field that's on tough. that play. Um, so, but I, it was just it, it was one of those where Saban puts him on an island. Yeah. Right. And if you're on an island. And the guy gets hurt. There's, There's nobody else there. So, so I know that everybody's slurping Trevor Lawrence today, and rightfully so. Not oh, denying it. Not denying it. But, but nobody touched him. Nobody pressured him. The most impressive, best player on the field last night was Justin Ross. Oh, I, absolutely. I could have watched that guy catch footballs in unbelievable ways all day long. That 
there are very, very, very few instances where a college player has the ability to go play in the NFL after one year. I think Ross and I think, Lawrence. I think Ross and Lawrence are both very, very good reasons why, hey, man, what, why, why these guys got to got to play the next two years. Now, I know they love football, and this is not not, but, like, seriously, if they wanted to go make a living doing what they're going to do, there's there's no, as a quarterback, he could learn, and you could oh, yeah. learn so many more things. As a receiver, there are only so many nuances of the game. You're just trying to not get hurt and just get bigger, stronger, and faster. And, and it, I mean, you, you can learn how to block a little better. You can learn that. Now, I don't know. You're not going to learn that in the ACC, bro. No. I, I'm it's just not because nobody plays defense that you got to try to do that. No, it, it, look, it, it's what you and I have talked about forever. It is basically a two- to three-game season for both of these teams yep. every year, right? So for Alabama, it's and, – and we might expand that out to four or five, right? Because sometimes Auburn is pretty good. That's sometimes right. LSU is pretty good. Yep. Uh, and there could be somebody else pop up. Ole Miss, you know, in the past was whatever. But for the most part, every game for Alabama is – Pretty big, right? Uh, like a, a pretty big spread as far as talent goes. So you can cover up some of those uh, inefficiencies. You can cover up some of those things that that came to to light in this ball game. Yep. You cannot do that against Clemson, against Georgia. Now Georgia wasn't quite there yet. No, I am curious about next year though. At, like is next year when Georgia finally pops up or? Nick Saban in these spots when everybody doubts him and the dynasty's over and oh the new preeminent yep. you know team in college football, it, well, he's like, going to have to make some good coaching hires. Uh, yeah, I I think so. Defensively, I don't think that the scheme was the problem. I now I think Tosh Lapoy will be gone. Um, I don't think many of the coaches are going to be back that were there this year. I think well, I mean Loxley's Loxley's gone. taking the job. I actually think there's going to be a couple guys that are going to roll with him. I could see that. I mean, I could. I think Butch Jones has Hertz, already accepted the there, job. There, there are a lot of reports. There are a lot of reports that Hertz is going to go with him, and one of the coaches that recruited Hertz will go with him. And I don't know who that would be. I have no. I idea. And I don't know either because I was like, surely the quarterback coach isn't leaving to go with Jalen when he's got Tua. Like that wouldn't make any sense at all. No, but, no, the quarterback coach is the, the new OC, Dan Enos. Yeah. So he's he's staying at Alabama. Okay. Um but you don't you don't you don't make Butch the, the OC? <laughs> no, not not in these slides. You sure? Uh no, you don't I, even hire I, Butch. I, I will tell you this. I believe you and I had a conversation. I said, look, I know Alabama's supposed to be a juggernaut. I don't think y'all can win a national championship with Butch Jones as your kid. No, you didn't tell the me staff. that before the season. I, I told yeah. you that. I believe I had that. No, you you were now, not that Butch had anything to do with last night. Just saying, it's not wrong. No, last night was all Dabo Sweeney and his bunch. It's not right. It's, it's, it's that not, was. It's not wrong. It was looking like it was going to be wrong. Uh, no, Dabo was. Uh, Clemson was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, but maybe I'll get champions of life shirts. Nah, we don't. We don't mess with that. Al- Alabama fans don't mess with champions of life. It's it's national championship or bust at this point in the game. Now. Give him a few years. Saban decides to leave. Butch Jones gets a job. Yeah, then you're champions of life. Yeah, I'll be wearing champions of life. I'll be looking for anything. Anything. I'm just messing with you, man. That's uh, never going to happen. Yeah, I, I seriously doubt it will. Um, but you never know. Like, I, I, And everybody, let's talk about this for two let, seconds. Let, hang on. I want to be positive for a minute. I All want right. you to have an ability to be positive for a minute because I'm not going to be. Um <laughs> <laughs> what Alabama player you think stood out last night and said, you know what, we got our ass whipped, but that guy played hard. He played hard the entire game. Uh, I thought Tua stayed in there and, and did well. Uh, Najee Harris looked good. I've got a lot of hope for the future because he has not been a featured back yet, yeah. but I think Josh Jacobs is gone. I think Damian Harris is gone. I think Najee Harris next year, junior year. He, had, he, he, he was um, instrumental on – the big drive, the first big drive that y'all scored on. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was he um, was kind of the guy you rode the whole. Way well, he's down. he's a Derrick Henry prototype. Yeah. And then he every is. fourth down, you kind of went to him. Early. Well, no, fourth fourth downs were were all Josh Jacobs. All was he in there Josh for Jacobs. all of those? Every one of them. Every wildcat. Maybe that was the problem. That's, oh, with the wild card, we didn't go wildcat every time on. We went wildcat four times. Four of the six, two of through one, which is a pick. Man, no, no, no. He didn't throw a pick on uh, on fourth down. Um, 
he oh, he right. ran he, one. They well, I mean, he got sacked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, but yeah. But they I mean, tried it, to throw. They tried to throw on one. That was it. He got sacked yeah, on one. And he got sacked. Man, I don't. It was all Josh Jacobs on fourth down. I don't now, really now like Najee that. Harris ran on third down on on a lot of them. Um, but yeah, Najee Harris I thought was good. Uh, line play. I mean, I you know I thought Judy some made guys some were good. decent plays. Uh, Judy, yeah, the, the wide receivers I have no problem with. It, it the only way the receivers will be effective is if they can get the ball to them. And Clemson got pressure on Tua all night, and he couldn't find the receivers. But that's the I me. Mean, I guess what shocked me in the whole game. Was you run an offense where those quick slants are there? When you're in the shotgun, you take the snap, you throw the slant. Like there, there's no pressure that can stop that. Well, the problem was that Clemson was able to stop those slants. Oh, okay. They got guys in in. They pressed jamming. them on the. Oh, yeah. Then that's on. That is on the receiver. Then that's a hundred percent on the receiver well, not being able to get off the jam. Yes, you got to be able yes, to do no, that, man. I, I'm with you, but but at the same time, like. I didn't know. There's that. a reason why I was paying teams more do that. Line play. Because if you do that, and Tua has time, because if you jam too much and Tua's got time to throw it, those receivers can get wide open in no time. So that's why other teams have tried that same thing. It's and, no, but it's still the right play. You just got to be able to jam them. And the reason that's the right play is because even if they're not open. Tua's accuracy is well good enough that he can still hit him. You could cover him like a blanket oh, yeah. and still hit him. Uh, the one, the the second interception that Most Tua threw. Most people were just too scared to do that. Uh, Jerry Judy. Just a real bad overthrow. Well, now here's the thing. It would not have been an overthrow. Judy stopped running on the play. Did you see this? No, I didn't notice that. I saw, I saw the ball no, was he, six yards over Judy's head. He slowed up before he ever, like, before he noticed that Tua threw him the football, oh, which I... That's why they were talking to each other, and Tua was like, "What the hell are you doing?" That's on him, man. Um, so it, that's I. I went back and watched that like numerous times. Like, what in the world just happened here? How bad did Saban threaten Tua when he threw those two interceptions? I don't think that bad at all. Oh. I, no, there's look. I told you before the season that this was the reason why Tua was starting this year over Hurts. That guy, because you can live with the, with the interceptions and whatnot because you know that your defense is going to give up points. So you are going to have to have more risks throwing the football. Got to score more than 16. Uh, yeah, 100%. So second half went like this. Alabama, fake field goal, over on downs. Clemson touchdown in three plays. Alabama, eight plays, 59 yards. Gets down to the Clemson 14. Second and four, pass incomplete. Third and four, pass incomplete. Fourth and four, Tua runs for three yards. Clemson ball, 12 plays, 89 yards, touchdown. Uh, next next drive. Alabama, nine plays, 66 yards. All the way down to the Clemson two. Over on downs. And couldn't, then it was done. And then, oh, get so then there's four, a, four plays from the two. And then they go three. Clemson goes three and out. Alabama goes three and out with Jalen Hurts in. They actually lost four yards. And then Clemson goes 14 plays, 94 yards. How much time that take? Does not score 10 minutes and two yeah, seconds. I was about to say, I, that had to, I remember that drive, and I remember it taking forever. Alabama moved the ball down the field basically the entire game. So this is one more thing that I, that I, I hated. I hated that Alabama was doing. It drove me insane. I couldn't figure out why. You're down. I, I can't remember the score. It's middle of the third quarter, but it's middle of the third quarter, and you're getting you're getting, you're getting your ass whipped. It's thirty, I would imagine this is thirty-seven to sixteen at this point. Something of that nature, like like the first touchdown after the fake field goal. And you're already no, it was it was a drive after that then because it's getting to a point where it's ball game, but it's not quite ball game yet. Alabama clock is ticking, and they're letting it go down to three and four seconds every time before they snap the ball. The, okay, At some was... point in time, you have to realize we can come back in this game, but we can't bleed clock and come back in this game. The okay, time yeah, is against where it was, where That's it was on 44, the coaches. 44 to 16, and it is down to, yeah, because from first and 10 at the Clemson 27, at the very beginning of the fourth quarter, 12 minutes and 17 seconds is when they uh, did not get the, the touchdown. On That's the right. They didn't get the, and, the, and they bled clock. the whole, And I'm not saying use timeouts. 
But you have to, you can get to the line, have the play called, and snap it in six, seven seconds. I mean, I mean this, it don't it don't take twenty five seconds to do this. Well, this this will tell you. First and goal at the Clemson eight. There was fourteen nineteen left. Second and goal at the Clemson one. Thirteen minutes forty six seconds. Yeah, you just can't do that. Third and goal at the Clemson one. Thirteen minutes and one that's, second. That's you have the ball. You have control over when you call the play, what you do, and and I thought. I'm watching this thing, and I'm watching it tick down. And they're freaking out. And I'm thinking. Like the players are like, freaking out. Like they're going to snap the ball. If I was on defense, I would have been jumping off sides at this point because I'm thinking they're going to quick snap it. They're going to quick snap it. Well, I think, I think at that point no, because you're – quick snap there's, anything. There's still plenty of time left in the ball game, right? It's not plenty of time, but but you see – When you're down 28 points, but, but it's here's not the thing, plenty of time. When you have had so many – 21 fail, at that time. When you've had so many failures in the red zone at that point, you understand the you gravity of the, the situation. Right play you gotta have the right play. You gotta have everything right exactly right. So But by going old, slow, I think it actually played two Clemson's yeah. advantage. Old, old poker player that paid for college playing playing poker back in the back in the heyday of, of online poker. Think long, think wrong, man. Yep. No, I disagree with that completely. Those guys are grade A athletes. They're all five stars across the thing. And the the other team on the other side has whipped your ass. Get up there, call a play, and go be an athlete. Yeah, but trying to trick them and motion and this that and that, man. There's a day and a time for that. But that was not that it. That ain't it. That was not it. That was not the right time. Uh, yeah, I mean that, overall, uh, the stats were were fairly even. I mean, other than that last ninety four uh, yard other drive, than the score. Other than the score, I mean it's it it is rare. This reminded you. Uh, reminded me so much of the Ohio State Purdue game, where, and I, I didn't think about it during the game. Blowout, but but if you go look at the stats, it's it like fine. okay, well that's like that. This should not have been what it was. But if you go back and look, I mean, there's key third downs that Clemson hit just at the exact right time. There's key misses, that, penalties in the wrong spot. There's Alabama not getting it at you know letting pressure through when they absolutely could not. I mean, it was just uh, a myriad of mistakes that Clemson took advantage of, and Clemson never made one. One thing about each coach that they both did, something that that I I strongly disliked, got over quickly. But Saban at halftime referring to all the things that Clemson was doing to dominate them as – what wow god what did he say they copied a uh, copycat something or another and he just like whitewashed like oh they're just copycat and like they're running some gimmick offense out of here i'm thinking this is kind of a standard basic offense in college football today like it's pretty creative i don't even know that i heard this. oh no he definitely called them a copycat offense and he was like they copycatted some things that worked against us which oh that they they that's watched the, film and do, they yeah. and they saw other things so him being very dismissive of that going into halftime I thought that's classic Saban, classy dude. Well, it, him, it's so it's so players and him talking about like it wasn't anything Clemson did, like we just didn't execute. I was like, man, no, you might that, other, just give some that other team just whipped your ass. Yeah, the the Dabo. Come on, man. The the I can't believe we're here. If our <laughs> program can do it, anybody like this old farm boy. If it, you know, if anybody could be, you know, make. Nine million dollars a year and run this monster program. If I can do it, anybody come on, dude. Like, take your win and 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 you can be classy and you can congratulate the other team. And, like you, and you move get on. to do that the first time, but right? yeah, yeah. But we're we're four years into you're a monster, you're a dynasty. And like, we don't like, you can't tell you can't this tell all, us that anymore. It's all shuck stuff. It's not cute because now I feel like you're you're just putting on an act. Like now, oh, you're not genuine. Just be who you are. Well, I, and so part of me wonders. Like and I, I see you I fiery think, on the sidelines. I know that all shucks guy in who you are. No, I, he does get fiery, but I think like overall, because these are two completely different cultures. But I think oh, they're totally, built. Yeah. I think they are built very similarly, right? So while the the biggest part of it is like Clemson is a family and Alabama is a factory. Uh, they're still built from the ground up with player development, right? And it's, it, I mean, Dabo even admitted in the Saturday press conferences that he learned a lot from Coach Saban because he has tried to mimic what he does, but he wants to do it with a better atmosphere. 
where people aren't uneasy going to the office, right? So I, that's part of why Saban loses so many Brent assistants. Venable seems like a really easygoing guy. I could see where that's the kind of culture you want when you got a guy like him. <laughs> I'm just saying, just saying. He's a great DC. He's an, he's a monster, but he's a great DC. Yeah, but I, I think it's easy. So Brent Venables, that's one of the reasons he didn't want to work at Oklahoma anymore is he wanted more family time. He wanted time with his wife and children. Well, Clemson was like, we'll pay you more and we'll give you more time off. And it's worked. Like, it, it is – Saban has a culture – kind of built around fear a little bit oh uh okay it, so well i mean you can it, be modest that's all right yeah it's so it, it's built around fear correct and with Dabo, it is everybody's happy go lucky and we're dancing and we're whatever um and both methods work like both are successful but in this situation i think nfl caliber talents across the field make you successful i agree with that and I, I think there's I think, certain I think matchups. it doesn't matter if you're Urban Meyer, who's just a damn liar. I don't, I don't think either one of the cultures an, is better than the other. Asshole. No, I don't. Uh, what makes one better or one worse is NFL talent. The talent on the field makes them worse. Yeah. And look, man, I I know I got just completely raped and pillaged on on our YouTube, um, like the comment thing. Uh, listen, you can say that. We built this from the ground. It's a, it's an absolute machine. Just because you sucked nine years ago and all of a sudden now you're a dynasty, doesn't mean you're not still a dynasty. And you, in in dynasties weren't built off of honor. They just they just weren't. They no, weren't. I mean it's they were it's, built off gold. Every one of them. Yeah, and that's and I do agree with that. There's a network you can talk about. Oh, we turn three stars into four stars every day. Bull crap. All those four defensive linemen that are all going to go in the NFL. Those are all five-star and four-star guys. Trevor Lawrence, all right, if you just want to take middle-of-the-raids, three-star guys, let's swap Trevor Lawrence out with whoever the hell LSU or Mississippi yeah, or, State or, has. Or the backup that they had, Chase yeah, Bryce. Yeah, for for because that's a three-star guy. And, yeah. and, 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 and let's put him in there, and let's put Trevor Lawrence at LSU or Mississippi State or one of these other schools, and, and we'll see if you win a national championship. I think top-tier, unbelievable talent wins. And if you continue to get that, you continue to win. It, don't I don't want to hear the player de- player development is important on every level at every school. No, the I'm reason not Alabama saying and not. Clemson, but I'm going to interrupt you on that. Player development is a big deal when you have better starting talent, <laughs> and then you can coach them. You can coach the four stars into five stars. So if right? I if I've got better talent than you, and no, I'm saying then, that's why Alabama and we, and all, Clemson, and we all make our talent better. Then I'm at the end of the day, I still have better talent. This than you. is yes, the, but this is what I'm saying. Like, it it is it is why it is such a big deal for Alabama and Clemson. Every four and five star does not pan out you're right. at other schools. You're completely right? You're right, and it doesn't always pan out with Clemson and Alabama. You're completely right. But when you have such a stock of when them, when you've got twenty of them, it doesn't matter. Now Clemson does not have near the stock that Alabama, Alabama does. You're right. So Clemson exactly development right. players is a big deal. Alabama ends up with more I, injuries. Now Clemson, I don't think anywhere close to Alabama in depth. The difference is, is those guys just for some reason just have not gotten hurt. No, it, they it, don't Clemson's, deal with the injuries that 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 other schools have dealt with. It's a fortune. That could be something to do with their strength and conditioning. That could be something to do with their athletic training program. That could be I, something I, to do with their schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, playing through the ACCs helps you a lot. When all your starters don't play the third and fourth quarter, then yeah, that's a big deal. Um, but but it's just one of those Which things. Which also where, helps to build depth. So uh, build so depth. while their while their recruiting class is you know twelfth in the country and not one or two, it it doesn't really matter if the five stars that are all starters never come out of the game. No, you're right. So you're anyway, right. just put a pin in that. That was a recap. That went really long. It did go really long, but you know what? It's, it's the uh, it's, last college football recap yeah. you're going to get of the year. Yeah. I mean, well, no, not necessarily. We're going to do the bowl recap here in a minute, but we're going to oh, roll through no. that. Like, this is going to be a, a, a Senate or sentence for each. I can't talk tonight. That's I good. swear to you. That's good. Um, so, yeah, go to uh, tunicatravel.com. Go to winningcureseverything.com. We appreciate you guys. Hopefully, you will stick around for the off season. We are not stopping doing videos. I'm doing college basketball stuff. Yeah, I don't do uh, basketball. And nope, that's that's all going to be me, and it's daily. So if you can deal with me every day, you, you might win. 
He's doing pretty good right we, now. We winning so far, so we'll see what happens. But uh, but yeah, that is our last recap for one specific game. Uh, and we'll we'll be talking more stuff later on. Like I said, tunicatravel.com, winningcureseverything.com. You got it.